I'm going to show you the rest of the grinding that I did on the block later, but right now uh, I've already got set up. What I'm going to introduce you to, for some of y'all that don't know about this, uh, without going too far back, this is a serious block modification. And of all the block modifications that I've witnessed and seen, there's probably not one that yields so many benefits in so many ways as what's called zero deck. Well, the only way you can get true zero decking is you have to have the actual crank you're going to use, the pistons you're going to use, the pin, the rod, the bearings, and you have to put it in the block and you have to mock up um, cylinders 1 and 7 and 2 and 8. Why? Because those are the four corners. This is called four corner mock up. Now, uh, You'll hear a lot of businesses say, well, we can do it mathematically, blah, 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 without having to have that. They're full of shit as a Christmas turkey. The true fact is, unless you have the actual parts you're going to use, and you use one piston and one rod, which I've got the number one piston the number one rod. Remember where I polished the beams, and I think I told you about polishing tops of the pistons, but whatever. We're going to use this rod and the actual crank, we're going to measure how deep in the hole that it is. Okay, let's look over here at our parts first. Crankshaft is the Eagle uh, standard uh, 350 main and uh, 375 stroke. An Eagle SIR rod, which these are the ones you've seen where I polished a 440 grid. I still got a shot peen them, but I've already got the weights recorded. The piston and pin and the bearing. We're going to put the crankshaft in the block, lock it down with uh, the number one cap and the number five cap, and then begin our four corner mock up here. Excuse me for having to walk in front of the camera. Anyway, notice how right here on the block, I've only got the bearing in this end and on the number five and the number one, because that's all I really got to have. Okay, I've already done the grinding. Let me get you in here, which I have quite a few hours. I never imagined, and I've done these before, but this particular block took a lot of meat to cut out here and then up in here so the connecting rod and crank can go through and rotate. A tremendous amount of work getting all that clearance, which I usually take a feeler gauge wherever the crank or rod's going to hit and I slide a 60 thousandths feeler gauge on steel rods and I try to get 100 to 120 on aluminum rods. But anyway, right now we're ready to go here, you know, like, like I was telling you, the notch bevel there and then right in there and grinding and blending it and getting it all pretty smooth and equal. All right. So anyway, let's go ahead and let me show you how I set the crank in there and begin the four corner mock-up procedure for zero deck purposes. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the Clevite 77 bearing lube and throw a little on there and throw a little on the main. I always take my fingers and just kind of massage it in a little bit. Okay, and then this one here too. And then I always put some on the thrust. Try to get it on both sides where I've got no bearing area that's uncovered because these are the, by the way, these are the king bearings, what they call, I believe, the uh, HP STDX, which is supposed to be a thousandths more clearance because, as we all know, eagle cranks come fat. I've done enough of them over the years where I just pretty much come to accept the fact that they're going to be a thousandths over on the bearing size is what they're going to need to make work. Okay, then we're going to take the crank and set her down in there. Alright, then we're going to go ahead and take the caps and lock her down. I'm going to go ahead and get that done. Same thing, I put the lube um, right here and right there. I want to massage it in. Because just like running a motor, the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to let a, a, an area be untouched where metal touches metal because you know as soon as you do that, ball game's over. Alright, I'll go ahead and put the caps on and lock her down. Now, you don't have to torque them. All I do is just I give it a good pull. 
make sure I, I tap it with a hammer first and give me a good pull and make sure that it's snug and in place. Oh, I got one of them uh, China adapters there. The ARP bolts use the uh, half inch head diameter. Alright, then you do a crank field test. Look at there. I'm absolutely tickled to death with the line home job that I got. I uh, haven't went in there and checked the housing boards yet. I'm getting ready to do that as I do it. But now we're in the state where we can begin the four corner mock up. Now, I'm going to have to bust the rod apart and get it all set up, and I'm going to give y'all a better bird's eye view. Now, I'm going to feed the piston in through the bottom. I have put the ARP assembly lube in the bearing end. And I know that this being the number one, the quench side of the piston is going to be pointing up. So let's go ahead and drag it through. Now I would add that this is very tight. What I had my machinist do, and I always do, is I have him bore the cylinder where I can barely fit the piston in. And he just lightly touches it with the home to keep from scratching the piston. Okay, that is exactly what I'm looking for right there. We're going to put the bearing tames tame to tame, which also you know is the radius side touching the crank. I have seen machinists do this and not put the bottom cap on, but I've also seen some inaccurate numbers. It takes a little more time, what the hell. Better to be safe than sorry. So I thread them in, and then I just do a little snug. Then we're ready to turn the motor over on the top and see what we got. I will go ahead for, you know, what I'm doing right now. Let's go ahead and pull it down. Now, we're going to discuss what Zero Deck is about. And I'm, you know, I'm sure most of y'all realize, but there's some of y'all newbies that might not know about it. But the reason that this process is so important to do is because you gain, I know, two, maybe three major things out of it. Number one, by having it at zero deck and having quench, which it only occurs at 40 thousandths and below. I typically like to see it around 38, 35 thousandths total, which includes the gasket thickness. So if you're at zero deck, you have a Felpro gasket, the gasket's 39 thousandths, which is, I think is a 1003 Felpro, man, you're in the game. That turbulent movement of gas makes all the difference in the world. Okay? Now, we'll cycle it through. All right, we're ready for the measurement. Now we're going to turn her over. Now I'm going to set it up level. And I'm going to get you a closer view, but I just want to verify. By making this thing so tight, you can see the resistance I'm having. That is because on the board, the piston barely fits in the hole. I'm going to try to move you now and get you a little bit better shot. Even though, you know, the pistons were as tight as they were, my machinist was considerate so as not to scratch the skirts of the new KBs, which these pistons were not cheap, even though they're the hyper eutectic. Keith Black, like a lot of these companies, when they got a niche market, they're going to wear your ass out. There's not no other piston manufacturer I'm aware of that makes what I consider to be an affordable piston for around $400 on this 305 400 crank stroker motor. All right, that being said, uh, he didn't want to damage his skirt, so he just barely kissed it with a home. Now, here's how you do it. 
I've already finessed it and got went back and forth, but I'll show you how I do it. And what I've got is I've got about five thousandths of rock. All right, here at the very top, what I'm picking up is twenty-eight and thirty-two. Twenty-eight and thirty-two. See how I take my fingers and I'm pushing the piston back and forth, 28 and 32. That means that what I'm going to have here is 30,000. So I got two over the 30, two under the 30. So I'm going to mark this side right here at 030, meaning it has to be cut 30 thousandths here. Now I'm going to show you how I got that. By taking this and I'm pulling the piston down. Now I'm going to get back up. And what I'm looking for is right when I see it start to come to the edge. Alright, I see I just passed it and it started to come back down. You got to sit here and play with this a couple of times. And then you take your finger and you push the skirt to one side. By pushing the skirt to one side you're putting that pressure on it. See that little bit of piston movement right there, you, if you don't take that into consideration, you're in a heck of a mess. Alright, I'll try to keep a finger pressure on this side of it. Alright, and then come back and bring it back up. Because see, the piston has to cock, load the cylinder, and bring it up, and that little bit of movement can be 2 or 3 degrees, probably closer to 2. So, we got to get that into consideration. All right, now, here we go. We're coming on the stroke. And making sure the rod is exactly lined up is part of it, too. So I take my finger and I go on the bottom and make sure I got a straight up and down path for that connecting rod. So I get the numbers that I'm looking for. I think I'm going to switch to a crank socket to get a little more precise. I'm tired of this thing. I've got the good comp, comp cam sprocket. That's better. Never thought I'd see this, but right here in front of the eyes, I just had to replace a, had to make, open me up a brand new dial caliper. The one I was working with, as you've seen, it kept jumping around, and when I went to check it out, it just went bad. Uh, I try to keep me two or three new ones and keep calibrating it because, boy, you get that wrong, you're in a mess. Okay, now let's try this turkey one more time. Alright, I'll be a little bit better. Okay, first thing I did was I went over here and I centered it at zero. Zero there. Make sure I got zero there. Then I come over here and pick off the tallest part, the quench pad, which is closest to the center. And then I come up here and check it out. Okay. But just pretty close to the reading I got. I'm at 30. It's just it was glitching a little bit and that was bothering me. And, I, and I'm not up for that. I got to make sure it's very precise. So... Readjusting my crank sh socket. You got to be comfortable. One thing I can't emphasize enough when you're doing this is being very comfortable with what you're doing. Okay, so I'm going to go over here, zero it again, make sure my little ends are tight on both ends. Okay, and then come back here and zero. Alright, I got zero there. Zero there. Great. Two confirmed things. I also zero it after. I'm going to get this thing as close to the center as I can and then bring it up. Right, right there, I'm at 30 thousandths. Look at there. Now, I'm gonna, when I get it to the top, I do my piston rock. Okay? I'm going to go back and verify it again and get it as high as I can. Keep 
keeping force on it. I'm going to push it down on this side. And I'm coming up with 28. When I get to the tallest point, I rock it back there. And remember, the thing to remember is using the same amount of pressure. You can't push harder here. This is where this becomes a thing of feel. And you go back and you say, okay, I'm going to put the same pressure here. I'm looking at about 28, and I'm looking at uh, 33. No, 32, excuse me. 28, 32. Well, I tell you, the worst thing in the world about getting older is losing your eyes. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that caveman method there. So it looks like the numbers I got in the beginning are pretty much holding to. 28 and 32. 28, 32. Then I'm going to pull it and go down. All right, I've seen a little bit of movement up. Now if I use the same pressure and go up all the way to the top, 33, and that can be the, the, the at the bottom that can be some movement, 28, 32, 28. I've done got that number so many times that what I'm going to do is now I'm going to name this 28 and 32. Do the math, split it, and that means that this side here is point zero three zero in, and I'm going to go ahead and mark it. I just take a, a Sharpie pen, and right on here, point zero three zero, point zero three zero. I am going to number stamp it in the front part of the block, so my machinist, in case them numbers wear off, they can see the number. It's got to be off the back. Now. Having done that right there, we're going to back up, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this cylinder, which is 7, and then the 2 and the 8. We're going to have a group of numbers now. The one side on there is going to tell my machinist when he puts it up, he uses an 85B Rottler, most common one. It's an old machine, but it's still a good one if you've got the ways straight on it. And that's going to tell him if he's got to use shims to shim the block up a little bit higher on one side so that it starts cutting back here and then leads into it. Uh, this is the only true way to get zero deck on a block and be able to achieve quench. Any other way is bullshit. There's no mathematically way that I'm aware of when you got a crank coming off of a one company, a rod off another, a piston off another, you have to have all the parts you're going to use to be able to figure out what you got. So that's how we do it. We're going to go ahead and mark all the corners. You've seen how I did that. Take into consideration piston rock back and forth, the bearings in there, the lubes on there, and I run it through several times, make sure I keep getting the same numbers. But it looks like on number one, I'm 30 out, which is typical. Some of the Chevrolets will be I've seen them be from 20 all the way to 50. Some of them, I've had some blocks that are a bit taller. That's usually the truck blocks that I've seen. So anyway, there we go. I'll give you the numbers at the end so you can look at how bad some of these can be out.